What's up you guys? Welcome to my first actual review video. Sunlu reached out asking if I'd like to make a review video for their new filament dryer, the E2, that they're going to be releasing at the beginning of January. We have a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. My overall experience with filament dryers is relatively limited. I didn't even own a filament dryer until this past summer. And as you can see behind me, all of my filaments are exposed to whatever elements are down here in my basement. But I mainly print with PLA, so that's not really a big deal. They don't absorb moisture the same way that some of these more advanced filaments do. Once I started printing with PETG, that's when I decided it was probably time for me to get a filament dryer. The first one that I bought was the Ebos Polyphemus, and I love that dryer. Right now, it's probably my favorite. Then I decided to grab a couple of the cheaper dryers, the Sunlu S1 and the Comgro whatever this thing is. Both super cheap, intended to be used with primarily PETG, PLA, maybe some TPU, filaments that need to be dried and printed at a lower temperature. Both of the two small dryers, the Sunlu S1 and the Comgro, both max out at a temperature of 50 degrees. The Ebos dryer, I think, goes up to 60 degrees, but still, none of those dryers compare to the one you're going to see today. This new dryer, the Sunlu E2, is a much more capable filament dryer, and it's intended to be used with advanced filaments like ASA, PC, PA, filaments that require a higher drying temperature and a higher printing temperature. This filament dryer runs at a temperature of 110 degrees. It can also do the PLAs, the PETGs, the lower temperature filaments, but where it really shines is with these higher temperatures, advanced filaments, and if that's something that interests you, or those are the types of filaments that you're printing with, you're gonna wanna keep watching. Initial thoughts. This thing is massive. All right, can it be lifted? Oh boy. All right, some things on the inside. How do we get to the inside. Up. Oh. All right, so the lid just opens up like this. It has magnets that keep it sealed down. That's nice. And then on the inside, we have some items. Okay, power cord. All right, and then a tray with a little thank you note from Sunlu. We've got some PTFE tubing the user manual, and a tray. Okay, so before I take this in the printer room and get it hooked up, I think I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in in here where I have some room to work and a little bit of light and just see how it works first. Because if it needs to face this way, that's a bit of an issue because that's pretty wide. But if it can go this way, or if I'm able to access the screen from this way, I imagine this is kind of how it needs to go, but I don't know yet. So I'm gonna plug it in and see what the screen looks like. Cool, power cord is on this side. All right, turning it on for the first time. Hello? Whoa, okay, that's cool. The touch screen is very responsive. Uh, it starts right away. As soon as you hit power, this puppy is firing up. All right, so let's see. Do I set? Okay, degrees SV. What is SV? Actual temperature, set temperature. Okay, so SV is going to be the set temperature. And it said this thing can go all the way up to 110 degrees. Um, I don't need 110 degrees, but I think that will be cool. Well, I don't know what I need. They also sent me... Some fun filaments to try out, which I don't know that I'll try every single one of these because I honestly don't know how to print most of these. But we have Easy PA. Got to do some research. We have PA12 CF. Carbon fiber PA, the 12 variety. We have PC ABS. I've heard of those letters. And last, we have 
another PC ABS. So I don't know about any of these filaments, but Insulogic also sent me some filaments. These right here. Some of these I've heard of, at least. So ASA, I've at least heard of ASA before. We have TPU-95A. I love some TPU. Can't wait to try that one. Next, we have Pet G Pro. We're getting closer to home base. I have I've at least printed with Pet G before. Pet G Pro, we'll see what that brings to the table. And last, we have a matte PLA, which this is where I feel right at home. And we'll definitely be able to test this one out, but I want to throw the others in the dryer too and just see if maybe I can do a successful print of some sort. Okay, so the dryer's heating up. I set it to 65, but I got distracted because I was going to go to 110, and then I thought, oh, I have some filament. So we looked at filament. You guys were just here for that. So I need to do some research on most of the Sunlu filaments because I don't know anything about them or even where to start. So we'll have to go to the computer for that. But I do have kind of an idea for TPU 95A. <laughs> Let's see if it has any details on the box about drying instructions. It does not on that side. Keep dry. Okay, well, I will do my best. So far, my first impressions of in Logic, these spools seem pretty nice. We'll see what the filament is like. All right, does this have any info about types of filament? Sunlu, it said, okay, 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 I'm getting there. PLA, this is not PLA, so let's keep pressing the settings button, see what we can do. Sunlu, PLA, let's scroll. PA, PC, ABS. And it's changing the temperature according to what I'm doing. TPU, pet G. Okay, so TPU will just go with that and it set the temperature for me. Time, I don't know. 12 hours seems good. Humidity, I don't know. Months, what is MO? Working mode, mode one. Filament drying mode, mode two, annealing mode. Okay, that's for PA and PC. We'll get there when we get there. For now, we are just in mode one, ready to go. Once it gets back down to 55, we'll throw the TPU in there, and then I gotta find some models, I guess. Where, oh, where is the start? Oh, it's taped, nice. Well, maybe I should have left it taped, but that's okay. Element has been loaded into the dryer. Raising the top lowered the internal temperature tremendously, which it does say in the booklet not to do that, but it lowered the temperature, which of course would happen, but it's heating up so much quicker than I thought it would. It's already almost back to what I want it to be at, so that's pretty cool. Currently, I've got this printer back here hooked up with the Sunlu S1, maybe? I don't even know what model this is, but it's the basic Sunlu dryer. And so I'm gonna get the other one and bring it in here and replace it. Got the dryer all set up. I'm just loading in another plate. All right, let's see what this TPU can do. It's working so far. This is as far as we've made it yet. We had a couple failed attempts, but it was not the filament, and it wasn't really the dryer. I had it fed through these holes here in the back, the top holes, using the PTFE tube, but it kept failing because it was as if it couldn't feed the filament to the extruder. The extruder, it would just kind of stop pulling the filament all together. And it was like leaving these little, little wispy spots. And every single time I checked to make sure that it wasn't clogged and it wasn't, I was still able to pull filament out, but we fixed it now. I fed the PTFE tube through the back instead of the top and I got a successful print. 
And now it's printing this duck correctly as well. We'll see what happens in the morning. TPU was good. Now let's try out the pet G. Now that I've gotten a few test prints done, and I've gotten to use this thing for about a week, let's talk about it. So before I get into the likes and dislikes, I was able to get some successful prints with the fun filaments that they sent to me. The first filament that I tried out was the TPU-95A. I had some failed attempts. Both of these were fails, but it wasn't the filament and it wasn't really the dryer. I think this was more of a user error. I was able to get two successful prints with the TPU. We have this cute little rubber ducky that is designed to have a squeaker, but I did not print the squeaker. It's just a cute little duck. And then this fun little air tag holder that I have yet to put an air tag in. But both of these were Insologic TPU 95A, and it printed well. There's like no stringing. I did slow down the speeds tremendously, but I'm overall really happy with the way that these prints turned out. Next, I tried out the Pet G, also by Inslogic. I took my time getting started with the Sunlu filaments because they were the advanced materials that I had never worked with before and honestly didn't feel comfortable printing inside my house. So we'll get to that in just a second. But I did get some successful PETG prints. I was able to print these stackable boxes. And overall, I think the print quality was pretty nice. So after I got a successful PETG print and a TPU print, it was time for me to dive into the more advanced materials that Sunlu sent me. I decided of all of the choices that they gave me, the Easy PA was probably the best one for me to try out. I printed this super fun carabiner with the Easy PA, and I was so surprised that it worked on the first try. I loaded it into the dryer, ran it on some settings that I found on the internet, and made this little carabiner. But like I just mentioned, some of these materials I don't personally think are safe to print inside your home, and I do operate my print shop out of my home. So this was a 13 minute print, and this was the only amount of time I was willing to run this type of filament. So I used the dryer, I got it up to its 100 degree working temperature, ran it for a good amount of time to dry out the filament before printing, and then printed a successful easy PA print. So pretty happy with how that turned out. So now that you've seen my successful prints, it's finally time to hear about my likes and dislikes for this filament dryer. First, we'll talk about the things that I like, and there's a lot. The touchscreen, I really like. It's very responsive. When you press the buttons, it does what it's supposed to do. I feel like a lot of touchscreens, when you go and you press the buttons where they're supposed to be, there's either a delay or you're not pressing the right spot, but this actually works. It's very nice. It's very bright. You can see it. Everything is just clean. I really like the touchscreen. Next, it heats up really fast, especially if you're just printing with the lower temperatures, 55, 60, where we're all used to printing, really fast. And even getting up to 110 didn't take all that long, especially if you keep the lid closed like you're supposed to. And this thing feels like a quality machine. If you guys have used the cheaper dryers, the S1, the ComGrow dryer, like I showed earlier in the video, you probably know what I mean when I say something just feels cheap. Not this. This feels like a quality machine. When you open it up, it just feels strong and sturdy. It's got magnets that hold everything together and gets a nice seal on it whenever it's closed. The top feels like it's very strong. The outside feels nice. And Whenever I was using it, even at 100 degrees when I was printing the Easy PA, it was warm to the touch. It was warm, but I could keep my hands on it and I didn't ever feel unsafe or like I was gonna get burnt. 
that's actually pretty cool because 100 degrees Celsius is very hot. The next thing that I liked is how spacious it is on the inside. It holds two rolls pretty comfortably. So I'll put one of the Insulogic in there. I'll put a Sunly roll. And looking down, you can see just how much room there actually is. It fits two easily. And if I need to roll them, that one rolls, that one rolls. All right, so now that we've gotten through all the things that I do like, let's hear about the few things that I don't like. First of all, the size. This thing is massive. For it to only hold two rolls, it's really large. If you think about the S4, that holds four rolls, and it's a similar size. I would say that this one needs to be so large because of the amount of heat that it needs to produce. But if you're just printing PLA, PETG, the size can kind of get in the way. That's not what this dryer is intended for. It's intended for the advanced materials that need the heat, and you pay the price for the size of the dryer. Another thing that I don't like, and it's not really a make or break, it's actually me getting kind of picky at this point. I don't really like where the screen is located. Because this machine is so wide, it doesn't really make sense for you to place it next to a printer or in between printers long ways, which is the way that it would need to go for the screen to read correctly front facing. I would like the screen to be on one of the skinnier sides because the dryer in my print shop would need to be long ways so that it can fit between two printers. And it makes it hard to access the screen and see what's going on. You don't really use the screen that much once you've got it set. That's just me being picky, but one downside to where the screen is located. And last, which again really isn't that big of a deal, is how loud the machine is. But if you're running it in a room full of printers that are loud already, it's really not going to make that much of a difference. I'm just being picky. Yes, it's loud because it's having to heat a box up to 100 degrees Celsius, which is crazy to think about. But if that's the only things that I can find to complain about for this dryer, I think it's pretty nice. So finally, who is this dryer actually for and should you buy it? If you're printing advanced materials that need to be dried at a higher temperature, this is for you. If you're just printing PLA, PETG, typical filaments that can be dried at a lower temperature, this probably is not the dryer for you. I would go with a cheaper dryer that would serve that purpose and check that box. This is for people that want to print with nylon and ASA and things that are a bit more complicated and wouldn't work in the tiny Comgro dryer. If you think you're going to be printing or you would like to print these advanced materials, give this dryer a try. I had no issues with it. It worked right out of the box. It was easy to set up. The touchscreen is perfect and the interface is just easy to understand. You know what you're doing. Go for it. This dryer was cool. I had a lot of fun testing it out and creating my first actual review video. Hopefully there will be more in the future. Thank you to Sunlu for sending me the dryer to test out for you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you had a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. That's all we got. See you in the next one.